Hi friends. So today we are going to ex we are going to discuss about the Gauss's law for electrostatics. So in the last class we discussed about electric field due to a electric dipole at a and axis of the dipole and the equatorial point of the dipole. If you have not yet watched the video, I'll put the link in the description. You just go and watch. And uh, I'm going to start now. Gauss's law for electrostatics. I have a charge of Q here. So my Gauss law, I just want to find the net electric flux produced by this charge Q. So my electric field is always going outside. So what I'm going to do here to find the electric flux due to this point charge, I'm going to construct a, a imaginary surface. So my gas law is only applicable for the closed surface for ir any irregular shape. Okay. So I'm going to consider an imaginary surface is called a Gaussian surface. Okay. Of radius r. So the surface area of this Gaussian surface is said to be S. It's called a surface area of this Gaussian surface. So the imaginary surface is called a Gaussian surface. So with radius R. So my target is to find the net the flux produced by the charge Q. So instead of finding the total flux, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to consider a small area element is called a ds. What is the flux through this ds element? I am going to find. What is the number of field lines passing through this small area element ds? I'm going to find, then I'm going to integrate. So in this case, the electric field is going outwards. So from the positive charge, my electric field always going outwards. If the electric field is always going outwards means my normal vector also in the same direction. So imagine if you are sitting in the center of the football. So all the surface is going to be perpendicular with respect to you. Okay. So your normal also in the same direction, the electric field also in the same direction. So now I am going to write the expression for the electric flux. So my phi of E equals to E into A cos theta. So in this case, we have a normal and electric field are parallel to each other. Then the theta value is going to be 0. If you put cos 0, cos 0 is going to be 1. So E into A. So next I am going to substitute the value of what? So in this case, my area is ds. So instead of A, I can simply replace by ds. So electric field due to a, a point charge at a distance of r from the center 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square. So I can simply write 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square ds. So this is your d phi. Actually this is the small flux through this small surface area. So this is called your d phi. So I can simply write right, d phi e. So my target is to find the total flux through the entire surface area. So to find my total flux, phi of e equals to integration of, is a closed integration, okay, is a closed integral of d phi of e equals to, so listen, if I substitute this d phi of e here, I can simply write the equation 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is a constant, q by r square is not also constant, my closed integral only for the, this surface element. So if I perform this integration for a closed surface, I am getting my integration of ds will become 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q into the total surface area of the, this Gaussian surface. 
So the total surface area of this pia is 4 pi r square. So I can simply write is going to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught here I miss that r square q by r square the total surface of the sphere is going to be 4 pi r square. So if I cancel this r square and r square here and the 4 pi and 4 pi here then my total flux through the Gaussian surface is q by epsilon naught due to the point charge which means my total flux through this Gaussian surface is directly proportional to q and inversely proportional to the, the permittivity of the medium in this case it is going to be a r. So my flux through the Gaussian surface which is directly proportional to q and which is inversely proportional to the epsilon naught. So my total flux through this Gaussian surface which is independent of r which is independent of your radius of the uh, Gaussian surface is purely depending upon the magnitude of the uh, given charge. So the total flux which is independent of the charge. In another way I can simply explain the Gauss law in case the total flux enclosed by the Gaussian surface is 0 when there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. And listen in case if there is no charge in case if there is no charge my total Gaussian no, my total flux to the Gaussian surface is going to be 0. So I will explain using an example ok. If I put q is equal to 0 my flux is also 0. In case if there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface my charge may be outside. So I will give an uh, example in the example here. So I just erase this part. So I need this expression right. So I am going to consider a cylinder here. In this case, this cylinder is a my Gaussian surface, it is an imaginary surface. So you can apply your Gaussian for any surface, any shape, but that should be a an closed surface. So I am going to consider this is my Gaussian surface. So I am going to place my charge here. If I place my positive charge here Q, if I place my charge here, so this is the direction of the electric field from this positive charge. So in this cylinder we have a three surfaces. One is surface area S1, this is my surface area S2 and your curved surface area S3. So for a cylinder my S1 equals to S2 right. So I am going to consider the normal of this surface in this direction right normal of the surface 1. So if I consider this is my cylinder this is my normal of this surface this is the normal of this surface this is the normal of this surface. So this is my N1 so this is the normal of this surface N2 the normal of this surface should be N3 either may be here or here. So now I just want to find the total flux through this Gaussian surface using because of this electric field. So first I am going to write the flux through surface 1. I may write the phi 1 equals to E S1 cos is going to be anti parallel. So the normal of the surface is just anti parallel to the electric field. So I can simply put cos 180. If it is made cos 180, this is going to be what? Phi <coughs> minus of E into S1, right? E into S1. This is a flux through surface 1. Next, uh, the flux through S2. Phi 2 equals to E into S2 cos. So here, the normal direction which is parallel to the electric field direction. So then my theta is going to be 0. So cos 0 is going to be 1. Then I can simply write E into S2. So this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2. So next I am going to consider the flux through the surface 3.
S3 phi 3 equals to E into S3. Listen carefully. Here my electric field is perpendicular to the normal of the surface. So if it is perpendicular, cos 90. So cos 90 equals to 0 because cos 0 is going to be cos 90 is going to be 0. So the flux through the, the third surface area is going to be 0. So now I just want to find the total flux. If you want to write my total flux, phi equals to phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 equal to if I substitute my equation 1 2 and 3 here so since my s1 equal to s2 because for cylinder both the surface is equal so if I substitute my equation 1 2 and 3 here I am getting the net flux through this Gaussian surface is going to be 0 why because there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface the only charge in the outside of the Gaussian surface. So, there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So, this is what your Gauss law for electrostatics. So, when there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, the total flux through this, sorry, <coughs> total flux through the Gaussian surface is going to be 0. So, next, <coughs> the applications of Gauss's law. So, to understand the applications of Gauss's law, so I am going to define certain quantities, it is called linear charge density okay <coughs> linear charge density so if you have a wire of length l filled with either positive charge or negative charge so the total charge is going to be q so the charge per unit length it's called linear charge density lambda equals to charge per unit length charge coulomb length mid inverse right this is called your linear charge density so actually i am going to use for the applications of gauss law the next uh, i suppose to consider a surface area of a this is filled with the surface is filled with <coughs> a charge q now I am going to define a quantity is called a surface charge density, <coughs> surface charge density uh, lambda sorry sigma equals to q by a char total charge per unit area. So this is coulomb meter inverse square yes so coulomb meter inverse square. So, this is called linear charge density, this is called your surface charge density. So, in the next class, I am going to explain how to determine the electric field due to the, uh, the continuous charge distribution using the Gauss's law. So, if you like this video, share with your friends and subscribe our channel to get the regular updates. Thanks for watching.